All right, y'all, welcome to Houston, Texas. I'm here with JH, co-founder, the man running the, the charge here on some Texas biltong. There's a big slab of Texas biltong, and these are some, what do you call it, like shreds or cut up pieces slices. of it? Slices. Slices? Yes, yeah, slices yeah. is much better. South African way of saying chunks, slices. So we're here in the test kitchen here at Texas Biltong HQ. And what we're doing today is gonna make some biltong. JH and I, we just got done doing a podcast and doing a walk through the whole HQ here. And I actually, um, as I was talking to him, I said, it would be kind of neat if we kind of, let's get some, uh, get some creative juices going here. I, I harvested a mule deer in the Colorado Wyoming border here last year. Been eating on it, it's been delicious. It's really great meat. I was telling JH, it tastes like sagebrush. It's delicious meat. And I said, can you make biltong out of it? He goes, well, we haven't made biltong out of mule deer yet. So yeah, let's go give it a try. Yeah. I mean, it's a test kitchen for a reason. And he actually has venison drying on the racks right now. So we're here to kind of go through it all. So we brought up, you said backstrap is kind of a good meat for this, Jay? Backstrap is a good one. I mean, you can use the whole um, hind quarters. Most of the steaks you'll cut out of there. Backstrap is the nicest, but it's also nice to eat. So often people don't want to sacrifice. <laughs> want to mess up their backstrap yeah, for this stuff? Yeah, yeah, right. But if you're willing to do it, I love making belting out of it because it is the best. Well, then I love it, mate. Well, I can't, I can't wait to, to try this out uh, and, and give it a go. Before we kick off, again, how do you describe biltong? Yeah, so biltong is, is a South African version of beef jerky. Main difference is, is that it's air dried. Yeah. Um, so never smoked, never heated. Um, and we dry it in an entire slab and then slice it afterwards where jerky is typically sliced first and then dried. Um, so you have those, those slices after, after the process. So those are the main differences. Um, yeah, and, and we try and just keep it as simple as we can. Even even here, if we're testing, we add some stuff that we won't do in our commercial stuff. Yeah. Like we'll be using some washer sister sauce, I believe it's called in Texas. <laughs> yeah, we have washer sister sauce. That's right. Yeah, country western sauce. That's right. Um, so we'll be using some of that, which doesn't go in, into our um, main product, but it does add a little little something a little that some, I think some. yeah goes well with venison. So I would I, would I love it, man. Doing that. Yep. Now, as far as biltong go, before we kind of get into, I want to talk through the ingredients and what it takes to make biltong. But before we do that, what is the? You don't use heat to make this. No. So talk a little bit about the process yeah, and how you so, make biltong. So what what does the heavy lifting in terms of the curing is going to be the vinegar, both uh, in this case in the in the Worcester sauce. Um, and in the uh, vinegar, we use a red wine vinegar in this, in this case. Normally we'll use a blend. Yep. Um, so that's what does the curing along with the salt. And the salt is a very specific ratio of um, uh, what, how, how much salt to, to weight we need. Um, vinegar less important. We just want every surface to be covered because that'll kill the bacteria because low pH yeah. if there is any bacteria on there. Um, and then the salt allows it to cure. And we have the, the coriander uh, in, the, in the mix. We'll do some of that as well. It also adds a, an umami flavor. So you often won't taste the coriander, but it'll heighten everything. Heighten everything else. Yeah. yeah, and then we'll add some of this. This is my, my venison mix that I've been toying with. Oh, is it with. secret sauce? That's sick. So it says coarse ground black pepper on the side, but it's- Like a true smell. spy, man. Like you hide yeah. it in things that- Yeah. That smells delicious, I could, man. I could tell you what's in it, but I don't remember. It's written down somewhere <laughs> over there. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, I'm stoked, man, to crush this. How, how many days in a dryer? Yeah, it really depends. So, or so drying, because yeah. I'm going to be drying this literally in my house. In yeah, my so, so you're going to find somewhere that's well aerated. Um, ideally, get a fan on it. So somewhere, we'll, I'll give you some of these hooks. So you're going to yeah. hook this through the slab. You're going to hang it up and put a fan on it. Yeah. And you wanna keep it at constant temperature, constant humidity, until literally you, you feel it and you, you, you like the consistency that you feel. Okay. And I'll, I think we have one that's ready here, so I'll, I'll show that Give to it you. a go? Yeah, and I actually wanna do that before because we don't wanna- We're gonna get, let's do it. Yeah, man. so if you don't mind, I'm gonna grab one yeah, right here. Yeah, let's give it a test. Um, oh, it looks legit. Here, so this is this is what you're kind of looking for. So there's there's some give in that slab still, right? Can so I give can, it a pinch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna slice this up. Oh right yeah, now. man, that's not like jerky at all, man. Right. There's like it's got life in it. 
That's right, and we'll just take that off, and then when you slice into it, you'll see that the inside. Oh, dude, so that is gorgeous, isn't man. Isn't that pretty? And that, so this comes Here, from a back trip. Yeah, oh, yeah. See that? Yeah. Wow. It's gorgeous, man. Yeah. It's got like this. It's like red wine kind of look into this thing. And th this Bro. one, this one is whitetail. Um, Texas whitetail. Texas whitetail. Yep. All right. So people from, from Michigan would be pissed because they're like, "That's not real whitetail because they're little here." Oh, really? I think they're great. I think they have a delicacy too. I've, I've never met someone from Michigan. Right over here behind the camera. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't sound like you're mean people. They're great people, but they have huge white tail over there. I think it's the winners. I can you give it a taste. Yeah, please try. So that's what you're looking for. So you have some of that. Wow, man. That's some of that spice mix. That's Dude, it's good. nuts because it does. It, it's got give, but it's still really tense. Mm -hmm. I just ate that thing like you just. It's like a good medium rare steak. Yeah. So it'll, it'll fall, it should kind of fall apart in your mouth a little bit. Holy smokes, man, that is delicious. It is, that's why venison is where it's at. I what, think what is, is this the rub you're talking about or is this, this something is totally a, different? No, this is this is a mix of this. We, we okay. added, um, no, it's actually it's actually this. The same? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I yeah. dig it, man. Yeah. Um, Y'all wanna taste this real quick? Go ahead, come Just on. Just give it a, yeah, give it a go, come on, come on in. Wow. Just, I mean, it's different, man. Holy smokes. Yeah, so I'll, there's some thicker pieces in there. I'll just let this go for, a, for an extra day or so. And um, so that's kind of what you're doing. You're going like, I don't know, it's probably like making a brew or something. Mm -hmm. You just kind of, so there's art to it. It's not just pure science. Yeah, the exact yeah at, the, at, this, at this level, absolutely. Yeah. And then the, the challenge is now, okay, so if we want to replicate this, I would now, okay, this is, Perfect. So now I would put it through a water activity test, see if we have the right moisture content. Yeah. Um, because there are food safety concerns if it's too much moisture. Oh, so you need to make sure you've hit those numbers. Got it. And if it does, that's great. This is probably a little bit, just tasting is too moist to get to that. It so needs like another day or so mm -hmm. in it, just kind of taking that moisture. And that's all you're doing. You're not cooking it. You're removing moisture, which then cures it. And that's what allows you to eat Yeah, it. because all bacteria needs it needs protein, oxygen, and moisture. Yeah. So protein, you can't do anything about. But you can take the oxygen out of the package, which we do. Yeah. We flush them with nitrogen, and then we remove moisture. If it's below a particular water activity, even if there is bacteria on there, they're basically inactive. Nothing happens to it because they, they don't have anything to feed on. I love and Specifically, your, your sporiforms, mold, and so on. Yeah. Rely on, on those three on things. On those three things. Yeah. All right, man. Let's, or, dude. This is delicious. Yeah, we're gonna we'll, we'll slice that up here, okay. and, and we can we can work some. We can indulge. Let me get yeah. this out the way and get the other board, and we can start clean. Just watch yourself. I tell you, man, it was really cool being able to. This is special to me because, like, this. Uh, if you've not, have you seen like a mule deer and a white tail compared? I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Dude, they're like. If a mule deer is a <clears throat> CrossFit athlete, like a, uh, excuse me, if a white tail is like a CrossFit athlete, a mule deer is like a power lifter. Right. These dudes got like no neck. Yes. They're enormous animals, man. Right. And gorgeous. I, I, I thought they were like a white tail and an elk. Mixed. Had a, had a baby. Funny enough, a lot of yeah, had a baby. Yeah, yeah. Just, those two things put together, man. So I'm hoping that their meat is as tender as that whitetail, man. It should, I mean, there's no reason it wouldn't be. I have made it with elk before, and elk does the same thing. Yeah. It, it turns out uh, turns out the same. It's all gonna, it's all gonna rely on your drying conditions. Yeah. So, well, again, well ventilated, um, constant temperature with a, with a fan or some, some air moving over it. Yeah. It doesn't need to be any more fancy than that you're not you're not selling it to anyone this is like the this is the pioneer days man. that's right that's yeah. exactly what it is okay so let's let's get this going so sauce. yeah so we're gonna slice this open i just oh yeah i got a double pack oh there you go oh do we need to rinse it it's gonna have some good blood in it uh I mean, I don't care. it shouldn't should no it's not a problem it's the real south african way you gotta just get it yeah these knives are killer man holy smokes yeah they they used to be a lot okay these actually don't need to be sliced because you already have them pretty small looks like 
Now, what's the, typically you want to remove fat content and stuff, or yeah, you, it's you, okay so, to leave it? So, well, venison, the fat will will turn bitter if you, because not like beef. It'll make it rancid, right? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, you yeah, want to take you want to take that out, and then you want to take any big like this silver skin over there. That's a little. That's gonna guaranteed to be too chewy once it's done. Yeah. So you just kind of want to give it a check. Now this one I wouldn't actually trim any smaller than the guy has here because if you go smaller than this, um, it's going to dry too quickly and you'll have end up with a tough piece tough of product. cracker. Huh? Yeah, you have yeah. a cracker of meat. Okay. So you want it, you want it about that thickness. So you're going to hang that one. I'm going to open here. this guy. Up? Go ahead. Yeah. All right, man. Oh my God, well, who makes this knife? I don't know. That's the same ones that that salt bag guy uses that he throws <laughs> meat at people with. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, same thing. Okay. I don't throw meat at people. My accent is better, <laughs> but I like salt, so. Yeah, man. Dude, I forgot how, the other thing that struck me about this meat on the mule deer side, like, I mean, it's, yeah. like, you don't see that in the grocery store. Right. It's just deep, man, it's yeah. deep red. Yeah. So is this one piece as well? Yeah, that's one piece as well. Are these big enough? They're okay? I They're perfect? I wouldn't even trim them down. Yep. All right, man. So we're gonna leave that just as is. Um, now, when, when they'll dry out, they'll shrink by about 40%. Okay. Right, and that's, that's one of the ways that you'll check it. And then you'll, you'll kind of slice it thin like that once it's done. Right, so we're gonna start, start with the wet stuff. Okay, and you wanna add at least 3% by weight, but really it's just to cover the surface. So we're gonna, we're gonna go in of with- Worcestershire, Worcestershire sauce? Worcestershire sauce. We call it Worcester sauce. You all call it Worcester? Worcester, yeah. There's some people in our in our New England brothers and sisters would be probably upset about that. Don't be mad. Oh, that's okay. In Texas, we don't give a hoot, man. Yeah, New but England. Yeah, so we got, okay. Never, so you, never met someone from there. So no, we're gonna. <laughs> we'll have to introduce you to like, some folks, I like, man. I like old England. All right, now that I've offended everyone. Um, <laughs> this is something about offended podcast. Anyway, yeah. so, right. So we have, you want to get the wet stuff going first. So we have the Worcester sauce. Now we're going to add some of the red wine vinegar. Now you get, said the Worcester, Worcester sauce is not typically what you, part of the recipe. But no, this is just something that I know venison, if I'm making it at home, add something to it. So I'll always add it for myself. A little bit, yeah. But if we're doing it commercially, uh, we don't add that because it has sugar and gluten in. Um, in most of them. You can you can take that out and just use the, the other ingredients, but I don't think we've tested that as well. It doesn't add enough to add all of those ingredients. ingredients to in so yeah. we keep it simple as much as we can. So just looking at that now, you know, that's some good liquid around it. Yep. And then next thing is gonna be your salt mix. So there's a little bowl over there. This one here? Oh, this one here, yep. So, I mean, just on the dry ingredient front, we have salt mix, and JH just, secret mix. That's right, and the traditional mix. We always start with this base, so salt and the traditional base. Now, what's in the traditional base? Coriander? And black pepper. Oh, that's it. That's Can I it. give it a whiff? Yeah. Coriander is cilantro as a seed, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Yes, I'm an expert here. Welcome to the kitchen. <laughs> so, Dave. <That's> right. Follow <laughs> me for more recipes. There we go. Right. So we're gonna start. Always start with the salt. Oh man, you put some salt in there. Yeah, you want to go. Have you you want to go at least two percent by weight. Okay. Um, again, roughly speaking, and I give it a good mix because that that's these two are doing all the work in terms of curing. This is the main horsepower. Yeah. Right yeah. yeah. Now at this point we would um, we would uh, vacuum tumble it because that shortens the time from twelve to. Uh, 18 hours to down to 30 minutes. So commercially that makes sense, but you're gonna drive home with this and you're gonna leave it overnight and you're gonna hang it up tomorrow. Yep. Right, and then this is all by feel. Um, okay. Again, you wanna go about 3% by weight, roughly speaking. And that's what we saw on this piece here. That's, yeah, that's the dusting on that. And then now here. Now just purely for flavor, not for preserve, huh? Correct, this is all flavor that we're working with right now. Yeah, man, look at that. What is the worst meat to use? Chicken? Anything white, any, any white meat, yeah. I've, I've heard lamb is pretty bad, but I've never, I've never tried that. Yeah. Um, I know it's fatty, so, so the fat content impacts the, how, how long the drying takes um, substantially. So 
Uh, I mean, I love lamb. I've never made lamb both time and I have no intention of doing so. Um, and I'm just squeezing the air out of this. Again, we want as much contact with the marinade on the meat as we can. Now, just by the size of it, Jage, are you thinking, yeah, this is probably a five-day dry? Uh, three. Oh, three really? Days. It's yeah. a short yeah, situation. Yeah, if, if you get some good air on it, three days. I mean, what am I doing? Just hooking up like a like a little room fan? Like, how yep. would I set that up? Yeah, okay. so I would I would find um, some place where you can hang a, a rod, a curtain rod or something across yeah. the surface. I used to do it in my dining room because that doesn't get used that often. Um, you know, yeah, you, no American dining room gets used. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that you, one one meal a year that everybody right. still eat. everybody eats at the kitchen counter. That's right. So yeah. you find maybe between two chairs, um, you put up a, a like a washing rod or or even a broom handle if you wanted to. Just put that over the two chairs and you hang this over that and you put a fan on top of that. That's it? Yeah. High speed, low speed? Just just, you just want to keep the air moving. I mean, you can you can tell here how it's sucking quite a lot of air, but this is the commercial stuff. You just want to have air moving over it. Okay. And then you want to make sure that you keep it away from bugs, which is why in the house is better. Yeah. And keep it away from that awesome dog. Yeah, I was going to say, and, and old, yeah, the shark bite yeah, coming in. Yeah, because he will 100%, <laughs> as soon as it goes up, clean them out. <laughs> There is, I haven't met a dog that can resist this. Of course not, yeah. man. I can't, so, yeah, if a human can, they sure as heck can. Yeah. Right? So yeah, you're going to do that back. But send me a picture once you have it up and I can kind of guide oh, you. Oh, I through. will, brother. No, yeah. and just so you all know, the only reason we're not using his really badass drying racks here is because you got an adventure going to New Mexico. That's right. And if this was drying here, by the time you could send it to me, this would basically be a cracker. Correct. And yeah. we don't want to, I mean, you worked hard for it, so we don't want to make yeah yeah we'll make it into it, it so three days just keep feeling touching it is yeah. there ever a situation where i just kind of take a little slice of it to see how it feels and if it's not quite right you let it hang a little yeah. longer i mean that's the that's the authentic way is, okay as you taste it i was like. just wondering if it's like you know hey man once you break open the seal like hey it's it's no, done no it'll 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 keep drying it'll okay. keep drying yeah you might i mean again this is for home use you're not going to sell it so you might find, if you do that, you might, in the summer especially, you might find a touch of mold on the bottom. Yeah. But once it is ready, you cut that mold away and, and you're fine. In theory, how long can this exist? Like, I mean, meaning, I you know we talked about it on the podcast, yeah. but like, you could keep this, once you have it cured, you could keep it dried for up to a year, no problem? Yeah, 100%. I would yeah. just keep it, like I said, so air um, or oxygen, water, protein. So. Again, we can't do anything about the, the protein, but once it's reached that dry part, you can't do anything about the water anymore. So the only thing you can then control is the air. Yeah. So you just want to make sure there's no oxygen that gets it and it'll, it'll stay fine. So Tupperware or a Ziploc bag or something like that in the pantry, yeah. will be fine. Yeah, good to go. Yeah, and then once you open it, I like to keep it in the fridge, only because if back in the pantry it'll keep drying out. Uh, I see. So, oh, so it's actually not from a preser preservation thing, it's just not dried out any further yeah, than what it is. Yeah, so you want to you be able to still enjoy the product after you've opened it. Um, I dig it, man. But so we, yeah, it doesn't right. make it to the fridge that often. Yeah, no, house, it's, so. it's gone. Yeah, we, we, had, we bought a slab from you, man, and we're like, this is probably going to last us a while. It was going Christmas yeah. morning. Right. We had coffee and we drank a built on it was kind of a weird combo but we did it man that's no judgment here that's 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 how it works i love that you're eating it for breakfast yeah this, uh, i'll i'll on a, on a typical work day if i'm working in the office yeah. i'll i'll have a slab out here and i'll start that'll be like certain two take your lunch. edit and honestly i'll just leave it here on the counter yeah for the week um because i know that we've got and you're going to be coming in and out you yeah. have good temperature control yeah. so so yeah. i don't even put it back in the bag i just leave it out in the cabinet. i mean honestly man i think this stuff is probably going to make like you've already convinced me that this is a chunk of meat man like that it is i'm already going to be taking the one thing that i miss on these adventures when i'm going to the mountains in alaska or whatever is you have the freeze dry stuff or ramen noodles or whatever you're taking right. out there and I always miss a sense of real protein. Right. And so this is something that like, I feel like it can kind of reconstitute it and oh, cook yeah, it in yeah. with some other stuff and yeah. give some flavor to my noodles or something. That's right. So our website ha has a number of, of really cool recipes um, yeah. that you can check out. There's there's one that I really like that's a biltong pasta, which is exactly that. So just like a cream sauce and, oh. and pasta and then you add some fine chop to that. Yeah, so, call it a day. Yeah, it's really good. What else do we need to know? I just take this home, it's marinated, so it stays there as soon as I get home, kind of let it dry out and just hang it? That's it. 
Yeah, yeah, okay. absolutely. And you'll get some comments about, oh, no, this can't be safe and blah, blah, blah. It is. I mean, that's how we do it in South Africa. In fact, in South Africa, it'll be in your garage, just above the car. Yeah. The car will have some newspaper so yeah. it doesn't stain the paint. When in Texas or when in South Africa, do as the South Africans do, right? So, <laughs> that's right. So I you, love it, man. Yeah, find, find a space away from bugs with some good airflow and temperature control. You don't okay. want it fluctuating if you can, if you can help it. So. Manual. Okay, so we're going to go give this a try. We're going to fast forward a week-ish, less than a week. I'm going to try to line it up with you so we can go do... I'm going to probably taste it first. Sure. But I'll give you kind of how the recipe goes, and then I'd love to go, you know, cut this thing up with you as well. Yeah. Uh, so we either either meet in Austin, or I'll come see you back in Houston. Um, if y'all haven't checked out the pod, go do it. JH just goes deep into what this business is all about, growing up in South Africa, what it's like to kind of grow up in this hard environment, and while he took those lessons learned all the way up here. And then we get to dive into more Bill Tong stuff, man. And so, man, thank you so much, brother, for having yeah, us. Yeah, anytime. It's so good to be here Welcome. in Houston, Texas. Yeah. And I love what you're doing. Cool. Appreciate it. All right, y'all. Stay tuned.